today's video is a bit different. I've had a lot of questions in my comment section and I've read through other skincare content creator comment sections. And I find that some of the questions are kind of similar. So I pulled out some of those questions and I wanted to do a video. But then I thought about what better way to do this video than to collaborate with a colleague and who else but this amazing lady. She's so amazing and she's been consistent <laughs> with creating content around skincare. I absolutely love her videos and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Aderunke and popularly known as A. Aderunke. I'm a skincare content creator and a YouTuber. So nice to meet you. Yeah, and if you're new here, my name is Onye Anikwe. I also create content around skincare and we're both happy to collaborate on this video. So we're just going to be chatting a bit about some of the questions, frequently asked questions in our comment sections. A lot of people are looking out to start their skincare routine, but they are not sure how to go about it. Maybe because, you know, when you go on Instagram, you see a lot of products, you see different people, you know, recommending different things. So, and some people are really busy. They don't have time to spend so much time in the morning trying to prep their skin. So the question is always, what is the most important step for me as I want to begin a skincare routine? Are okay, what do you think? Actually, when people ask me this question, I always tell people like, you can always stick to the basic. And for me, basic is just three step. Considering if you don't have any skincare concerns or any skin concerns. So I would say the first step is to cleanse, to cleanse your face. The following step should be to moisturize and the third should be to apply sunscreen those three steps they are the most important when it comes to skincare routine yeah i completely agree with you because some people make skincare really complex if you miss out spf every other thing you've put on there is a waste especially when you're using treatments it's just like pouring water in a basket there's no point we are not using spf exactly exactly the whole the whole essence of skincare is is a waste without an spf and I also believe that just because somebody is using a particular product does not mean that it will work well for your skin. Because I, I, I did a video and in the comment section of that video, someone came and said that this particular product is rubbish. And I'm like, <laughs> the product is, I think, is an amazing product. The thing is, this particular product is not the best one for you. So you should be taking um, into cognizance your skin type when purchasing your products okay, another question i i get um often is is spf important people ask that question a lot since we're talking about spf right now i don't care what's your own opinion on that i know you said something but can you throw more light i have actually had a lot of things especially on tiktok about spf a lot of people said our forefathers were using spf so why should we like there are a lot of people with clear skin that don't use spf but considering like a lot of things, a lot of factors right now, the climate especially, ozone layer depletion is real. I feel like SPF should be, it should be non-negotiable for anybody. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. really important because apart from the fact that it protects you against skin cancer, it also protects you, it serves as like anti-aging for your skin. So unless you want to be looking older than your age, SPF should be the most important skincare in your routine. Yeah, it's very yeah. important. How about if the cream already has SPF, or maybe your makeup already has SPF? Do you think there's still need to use SPF? Mm, I see a lot of marketing gimmick about this thing. They will have SPF 10, SPF 5, <laughs> SPF 15, and they'll tell you, oh, it contains sunscreen. Please, it does not contain sunscreen. <laughs> That thing is rubbish. <laughs> that thing is rubbish. Anything below SPF 30 is rubbish. Because even SPF 30, I personally do not encourage people to use SPF 30 because when there is 50, why are you using 30? Because even 50, <laughs> even 50 can only protect you for two hours to three exactly. hours max. Exactly. So why would you even subject yourself to SPF 30? Not in that top of SPF 10, SPF 15. That's a waste of money don't be a yeah. victim that's what yeah. i say yeah so the the ultraviolet rays that get towards they come in two forms the uva and uvb and mm. the uvb penetrates through glass 
so even when it's winter or when the weather is really very cold when it's snowing that ray is still able to get to us here in the on earth and that's the particular ray that causes sunburns so it's important that you're using your spf what's the amount of spf in your own opinion that is enough i always tell people to go for two to three finger rules two to three yeah. finger rules ensure that it is enough to cover your face and your neck but a lot of people um disagree that as long as it is enough for your face you don't necessarily need to follow the two or three finger rules but i always say two to three finger rules just to be sure so if you don't have big head you can go a little <laughs> yeah that's a good one consider the size of your body the yes you can go a little yourself. above yeah sunscreens are also meant to be reapplied because a lot of people put their sunscreen on in the morning and then they feel like oh it's all good but with your sunscreen sprays thankfully i had i got this yesterday this one just ran out i bought this one i have this on this table that i'm using so <laughs> your sunscreen <laughs> spray, this is the one i use this bondy sands comes really handy i carry it around after every two hours i just you know spray my sunscreen on so even when you I've have never really tried sunscreen sprays yeah. i use some sticks it's amazing i tried sun stick the one by is it tokobo that's the one i use i started out with but after a while i decided to try this one and for me it's absolutely doing it i just shake it and then spray it on my face and i am good to go so the most important thing is by all means whether you're using the sunscreen and um, stick you're using the the normal cream or whatever by all means we just apply, apply exactly. every two or three hours very important so some people have this issue with oh there's toner there's essence there's serum and they're like oh i want to keep it as simple as possible what's the difference between all these three things and which one do i really need to be using what's your opinion what's your take on that before toners used to be to balance your skin skin ph but right now we have seen improvements in formulation and you don't necessarily need a toner that balances your skin ph because most of the moisturizer serums are not a lot to your skin ph but now we now have toners that exfoliate we now have toners that brighten your skin so i'll say toner is optional not necessarily a necessity yeah. so if you choose to add toner to your routine that's fine and if not you are fine without it as for essence as well essence basically serves for uh, serves for hydration to hydrate your skin so if you're adding essence to your routine you are basically <laughs> adding hydration to your skin so if your skin do not need that essence hydration does not need that excess hydration you are fine without an essence but personally i'm an essence girly i always use essence in my routine that's because i do not have any hydrating serum there's no need for it but when it comes to serum i always say go for treatment serums yeah hydrating serums are not a necessity Treatment serum, say something that contains anything, tyrosinase, inhibitors, exfoliants, I'll say serum is a necessity, depending on your skin concern. Right now, they are brightening toners, so if you want to add that, say you are dealing with hyperpigmentation, and you need that layer of um, acid treatment to help you, you can add a brightening toner, but it's not a necessity. <laughs> if you're using a treatment serum, that will mm -hmm. brighten your skin, because, I mean, we're trying to cut down on cost here. And uh, that's true. To simplify the steps. You don't want to spend so much hours in the morning trying to put this, put this. And you know, you need to wait in between your products that you're applying. You know, apply one, wait a little bit so that it sits into your skin before you put on the other one. So, except you have the time, you know, to pamper yourself and layer, layer, layer. But yes, for consistency, the toners I feel like are more watery and the essence are thicker and more hydrating. And your serums, yeah. like um, Adironke said, basically focus on treatment serums and you need to be thinking about what your goal is what are you trying to achieve before you buy before you buy a serum not just because yes. it's yes and i always advise buying a serum that contains cocktail of ingredients not just exactly. serum that contains niacinamide or maybe chanesamic acid ensure that it has like lots of it so you are not wasting your money exactly especially when you're treating issues like um hyperpigmentation you need different ingredients to work together to be able to achieve what you're going 
do you get this question when people say oh can i use the, the cream i use on my body on my face as well do you get that question sometimes like when you I do. and you're telling people it's a body cream but they're asking you can i use it on my face <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are trying to minimize costs by using their body cream on their face <laughs> but i always say no no even if the brand says you can it can be used on both face and body i always say stick to body if it's for body if it's for face stick to the face yeah completely agree especially when you have skin concerns that you're dealing with a lot of body creams moisturizers can be too heavy for your face it exactly. can be too heavy for your skin type safe because we have different skin types on our face on our body you exactly. can have oily yeah and be dry in your body i don't yeah. think it's going to do the same job exactly 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 that's that's a good point because some people have like normal skin on their body but on their face they have oily skin so why would you use that same body cream you're using on your normal skin on your body on your face that it doesn't make sense and besides you know the skin on your face is is not as tough as that one on your body so you want to yeah. be plus i mean your face needs a little bit of tlc so i mean <laughs> give it some little pampering people would ask um do i really need a face moisturizer i mean i already have an oily skin why am i moisturizing my face um again do you think that people who have oily skin still need to moisturize their skin i'll say yes i'll say yes because imagine having like an oily skin you treat your face cleanse it do everything apply a serum i am not selling in all of that goodies so what is the point yeah. <laughs> the work of a moisturizer is to seal in to ensure that there is no moisture loss to ensure that everything that you put on your face is on your face is not evaporating to the atmosphere or whatever and apart from that moisturizer can also serve as so moisturizer contains a lot of hydration so you need that excess hydration especially if you have oily skin to reduce sebum too there are a lot of work that moisturizers are doing that you are missing out on if you are not using moisturizer and an oily skin and for somebody that has like a combination skin my skin right now is normal to oily as you can see i'm already setting the right season that's to show you <laughs> that's to show you that i have a normal to oily skin i never skip moisturizer there was a time that i do not use moisturizer at all and compared to now i see mm, moisturizers are a must yeah so consider your moisturizer like an icing on the cake exactly. you know if you want that cake to look really pretty then you need to put that icing like put it up with the icing and yes people confuse having a dehydrated skin with having an oily skin you can you can have an oily skin and your skin is still dehydrated so even oily skin needs moisture moisture water your body needs mm. water your skin also needs water and the job of the moisturizer is to lock in the moisture that's why it's called a moisturizer moisturizer so mindful when you're purchasing your products your moisturizers buy the one that works for your skin type i always stress because people are always asking everybody wants to have a brighter skin and the question is always oh what can i use to lighten my skin can the cream lighten or brighten my skin focus on moisturizing your skin is very important what benefit you have a fair skin that is not properly moisturized because it's that moisture that will give your skin that glow so you can that be yes that you are dying for <laughs> yeah so it's not there, but you need to be moisturizing it's a very important step that you do not need to skip um i don't know what moisturizers work for you but for people who are on a budget i know simple has a range of um, skincare products for people with oily skin concerns and then there's one particular cream for oily skin um la rose pochet effa clear that one is really nice for people who have enough money to you know spend and you have enough I, money there are a lot of uh, moisturizers that you can buy yeah for example so, i mean that as fan of tori then oh i don't know Turi if you've heard about it i know that Turi Turi then. Then dive in I'm not, gel moisturizer i've not tried them, Check yes. <laughs> not tried them. The one I just used was the Inky List um, Plumbing Face um, Cream. I just mm, I've never finished, the list. I just emptied that container, and the cream is really amazing. So if you you're not not it's not very expensive. It's not anyway. It, it's that being expensive. <laughs> is really, um, it, like, I would just say go for anything yeah. gel moisturizer. I feel like gel moisturizers work well for oily skin. Yes, mm. yes. For people who have acne, what's the best way to get rid of acne scars and dark spots in your opinion? 
that's that's a long it's supposed to be a separate video <laughs> like you said earlier you should have ingredient um serums that have a cocktail of ingredients right mm -hmm. so for people who have um dark Wait, spot uh, or dark spot acne though. yes dark spots or acne there are certain products like tyrosinate inhibitors should be in their ingredients and then i know a lot of people are not so big on hydroquinone but honestly that that product can be used to spot treats right depending on how severe and of course hydroquinone should be used for a long period of time but whether it is very effective it is very effective but it should be applied with caution another ingredient is kojic acid kojic acid is actually very good too for hyperpigmentation tranesamic acid tranesamic yeah. acid works well if you're trying out certain ingredients you need to see a dermatologist don't go and yes be, don't uh, go and self medicate <laughs> or whatever <laughs> they call it <laughs> have you seen people that do chemical pills by themselves have you seen that video they There's don't the video like themselves i've seen something, something like that i'm like this is there was even somebody that was mixing um was it not the ordinary that a h a b h a toner she mixed yeah. it with polos two percent salicylic acid you should see her face <laughs> it burned like this yeah. card was carried with mix that a h a b h a is already too strong that's so. already a peeling solution itself yeah, it's a peeling solution you now mix it with some no the person doesn't like herself obviously no she asked us she, she wanted to be <laughs> yeah, but sometimes less is actually more when it comes to skincare. That's what people don't know. Exactly. Less is actually more. Let's move on and talk about this this thing that is always in the comment section. Does the product lighten or brighten the skin? Is it really possible for people to safely whiten their skin? In your opinion, no. Especially when you are using like a white thing that that term itself <laughs> there is no safely attached to it <laughs> why would you want to do that like honestly there's no safe way to whiten your skin that's just the truth. No, i always see it whenever i say i just know it's slick bits if you see anybody tightening how to whiten your skin safely without bleaching slick bits just know they want to collect your money <laughs> Because but imagine I see a lot of brands now, they just use white thing. It has become a marketing term just for people to buy. Yeah, but most of those product act products actually do not whiten the skin. Exactly. Because when you have things like vitamin C, vitamin C cannot whiten your skin. There is no way vitamin C will whiten your skin. Most of so, them, if it's a really whitening product, it has to contain some some of, I think, steroid also. And those are not, they are not okay. If you really like your skin just embrace your natural skin and if you want to you know make it look radiant and you know shiny and not see the way ronke is looking now she's, <laughs> no, I, but she's glowing that's what you need <laughs> your opinion what are the habits you think people should incorporate because personally i think skincare having a good skin is more like a lifestyle it's not just yes. about applying cream on your body and expecting the magic to happen so in your own opinion what do you think are the good habits or the best practices that one has to you know implement to be able to get that glowing skin there are a lot of habits but first one i always recommend is do your night routine please <laughs> that habit is very important always ensure that you never skip your night routine because imagine all of those free radicals you've been exposed to all of those sunscreen residue and you're not washing it away the in the evening what's the point that's the yeah. number one habit i always say do ensure that you're always in your night routine and the second one that i see a lot of people making the mistake of is not cleansing for 60 seconds so I always say cleanse your skin for 60 seconds. Let's just do. Mm -hmm. And be gentle on yourself. Be gentle on your skin. Stop touching yeah. your face. Stop touching yeah. your face. I'm telling it's myself, stop touching your face. <laughs> picking the pimples and all over. Stop picking your yeah. Stop popping your pimples. There are a lot of habits. And ensure you are washing your pillowcase. Ensure you are yeah. washing your pillowcase. That's another thing. That's another thing. All the bacteria from your hair products and everything and landing on your face another thing most people do you wash your face before you wash your hair that's another thing that people don't realize is not that can never be me i wash my face i wash my hair first 
Yeah, some nice. people actually wash their face, and or maybe after taking their bath, they now wash their hair in the bathtub. You know that kind of a thing, and then you're getting all the residue from the hair care products onto your yeah, face. That's yes. what For me, I'm big on use your sunscreen, but most importantly, drinking a lot of water. Mm. People overestimate what water can do. Water, right? Water is life. Is it how many percentage of your body is water? Is it like 80 or 70 percent of your body is made up of water? You need to be hydrating your skin from the inside and then eating good food. Instead of spending all your money purchasing expensive skincare products, you if you pay a little bit more attention to your diet, you'll see that your skin will glow even without doing so much with just the basic steps. Eating yes. good food, cutting off sugar, you know, processed food and all that will do you a lot of good. Drink plenty of water and then do as like the basics you need to do for skincare. Cleanse properly, moisturize, and use your SPF and maybe use a treatment product, maybe retinol, depending on how old you are. The night starting out, I like the ordinary retinol actually because it contains squirreline. The one that I was having never squirreline. used retinol. I think the one that was prescribed to me by my dermatologist was adapaline. It's another form of vitamin A. You're going to repeat after me. One thing I can never do without as a skincare enthusiast is... Cleansing. Cleansing. I cannot do Cleansing. without it. Okay. Mm. One thing I, I wish I knew earlier as um, a skincare enthusiast is... To never stop my treatment. If you have acne, acne is not curable. You can only manage it. Never stop your treatment, even if you are clean. Your skin is clear. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like uh, Darren Kerr said, never stop your treatment. And that brings me to letting you know that you need to be consistent. Skincare is not just something you do for a short period of time and then you drop it. And that's why it's important. Skincare is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> a marathon. So think about what you can afford when you're starting out skincare. You don't want to put yourself in a fix just because you want to have a bright, uh, bright skin or beautiful skin. It doesn't have to be expensive. So find what you can afford that works for you and stick to it. I'm going to put up Adirun Kerr's channel so you guys can go check out her videos. She has a lot of amazing videos there. You want to watch, like, subscribe, and we're going to be creating more videos for you. So let us know what you'd like us to talk about in the comment section. We're going to see you again next time. Bye. All right, bye. <laughs>